5.44 on Tuesday, April the 29th, 2014. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, put some administrative uh, announcement here. The final exam will be on May 13. May 13, your lucky day. May 13 is what? Is your Tuesday. It's Tuesday, not a Friday. If it was Friday, it's your lucky day. But it's Tuesday. May, uh, Tuesday, May 13, from 2 to 4 in this room. In this room. So it's not Salvatore 101 like we did in the midterm. And we are, you are not going to be grouped with the other classes. This is only you. Clear? So, all in Hall of Engineering, 132. On Saturday, May the 10th, which is the Saturday before your final, I will be in my office between 9 to 1 p.m. If you do have any last-minute questions or inquiries, you can see me there. You can also review your, uh, your uh, project. I will be done with it uh, this weekend. You can also review your projects in, in that time as well. This Saturday, this Saturday, May 3rd, I will also have extra hours 9 to 1 p.m., but it is not open to 544 unless if there are no what? 450 and 555 students asking questions. They have priority over you because their exam is on May 8th and May 9th. Did you get my point or not? But if you drop by and I am by myself, I welcome you. But if not, you have to wait your, uh, when, when I'm done with my, uh, and that's why I, I uh, you know, this, I'm not sure that you will have a chance because I will be swamped. Uh, you, I have to be honest with you. But in case you are around campus, that's fine. Tuesday and Thursday, May 6th and May 8th, which is next week, you know that this Thursday is the last day of classes, which is May, uh, sorry, April 30th. But May 6th and May 8th, which is next week, I will be in my office between 9 to 3 p.m. If you do have any questions, from 9 to 3 p.m. So what are we talking about? We are talking about four hours here. We are talking about what? Six hours each day for a total of what? 16 hours. And then on a Tuesday, which is on the exam day, I will be what? From 10 to 1 p.m., which is three hours. For a total of what? 19 hours, office hours. Where? Show me another class where you take, you know, which the professor has 19 hours of his hours. By the way, if they have one hour, you are lucky. But anyway, I will be there. But keep in mind, the May 6th and the May 8th will be what? Will be shared. The May 13th will be what? Dedicated. This is the difference between dedicated and shared. Okay. Clear? Okay, good. Now, enough of this. By the way, I will be emailing you, broadcasting this all of the information and the material included, and so on and so forth, all of these things. I will be emailing to you this, uh, this weekend. Let's continue our discussion. We started talking about frequency, synthesizers, and we said that we are going to deal with the three types. The first type is called what? Direct synthesis and this one requires what requires what dividers multipliers mixers switches and so on and so forth all of these things and these is what no 
feedback. There is no feedback, only what? Feed forward. Clear? Only feed forward. Then we do have the what? The PLL based synthesizer. This is, is what? Feedback system. And then there is the what? The direct digital synthesizer. This is referred to as what? As a DDS. DDS. Clear so far? Uh, the phase lock loop, by the way, base synthesizer could be what? Integer? N? Or fractional? N. I will show you both in just a second. Clear? Of course, as I told you last time, this one by itself is a separate course. We used to have, by the way, that course a long time ago, before you came. It was called EE664. The title of the course was what? Synchronization systems. Synchronization systems because the PLL is not only used to provide for what? Uh, to provide for frequency synthesis. It's also going to be used to provide for what? Carrier recovery, symbol recovery. If you are using spread spectrum, it is also going to be used as part of the code recovery. Are you following me or not? Many of the phase lock loop is an integral part of what? Of uh, the communication systems. Clear? So there was a course by itself, 664. Right now, 664 belongs to some other class. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, the course, the course, by the way, was extremely challenging. It was a difficult course. Clear? It was a difficult course. But suddenly, it, uh, it, uh, I don't know what happened to it. Clear? Let's not get nostalgic about it. What happened in the past? It happened in the past. What I'm saying is that the phase lock loop is a course by itself. We, we only have a couple of lectures. I will try as much as possible to show you. Now, let me first of all give you an example on this, which is the example that I assigned for the extra credit. The question tells you what? Design a synthesizer that generate frequencies in the range. Oh, 25 to 35 megahertz with, uh, how much was the, say that again, with uh, one megahertz increment. What does it mean? It means I need to generate this 25, 26, all the way to what? 35. Did you get this or not? Okay, using what? Using a, a the, using the what? The, uh, uh, using the direct synthesis, which consists of what? Multipliers, dividers, and so on and so forth. All of these things. Now, the mistake that most of you did, you did not include this, which means what? The output, you, what you generated all of these. The 1 mega, 2 mega, 3 mega, 4 mega, 4, 5 mega. That's fine. And then you mix it with what? With 30 mega. What do you get? When you mix these with the 30 mega, what do you get? The 1 mega, you will get what? 29, 31. Yes? 28. Help me. 32. 27, 33, 26, 34, 25, 35. What happened to the 30? The 30 megahertz. You forgot about the 30 megahertz. So the 30 megahertz is coming from here. So let's see what this one uh, works. This is a what? This is a temperature controlled crystal oscillator, very high stable. Let's assume it's 3 megahertz. We take it into a what? A divider, which means what? This is 1 megahertz. Then I what double, 2 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 4 megahertz, 5 megahertz. Clear? So I have what? I have a 4 port, sorry, 5 uh, points or 5 ports in here. Okay. Then I multiply it by what? 10 to get the what? The 30 megahertz. Clear? The 30 megahertz. Then I have a what? 
I have the another switch here that will switch between 30 megahertz and the output of a mixer. This is a mixer. This is the 30 megahertz, and the mixer here can go into what? Into any one of these programmable. Yes? Okay. And the, the, uh, the output, what does this mean? What does this arrow mean? Tunable. Now, by the way, is this a unique design? Of course it's not a unique design. It's just one design. A reform is one design and a block diagram. Clear? Yeah. By the way, I will not ask you on this in the final exam. I will not. I will ask you on the PLL, and I will ask you on the what? On the direct digital synthesis. This one here, the reason why I would not ask you on this, because you could come up with what? Multiple answers. Are you following me or not? I don't want the final. I want just the one answer to finish it quickly. I will be grading the final. Yes. This is a tunable filter. So what, what, what do you mean? This is a tunable filter, bandpass filter. What do you mean if I need the 30 so megahertz? If I get a tunable frequency, I need to suppress the other, I mean, uh, the sample. That's the bandpass filter will do that. The band. If I get a tunable frequency, there's only, I mean, one, I mean, frequency that I'm interested in. Anything. Yeah, so you are assuming that this 30 megahertz is a pure 30 megahertz. Yeah. It does not have any what? Any noises or this, uh, excursions around the 30 and stuff like that. Yeah. Why is this bothering you? Is this bandpass filter bothering you? This is when you are saying the bandpass filter, what is the bandwidth of this filter, by the way? What is the bandwidth of this filter? What is the Look at the range. It's 25 to what? 35. So the bandwidth of this filter is what? It's 1 megahertz. No, sorry, 10 megahertz. Did you get this or not? Is the 30 within the band? The 30 is within the band, so you are tuning. Yes. One, one second. The tunable here is 35. No, the, the, the range of the filter is what? It's 10 megahertz. But if you want to select a channel, it is what? It is uh, 1 megahertz because you are uh, receiving one of these. Clear? The range, the dynamic range of this filter is what? Is uh, the uh, 10 megahertz. Is it 10? Yeah, 35 minus 20. Clear? Clear? I will not ask you on this. But did you get the idea? In a synthesizer. A synthesizer, you are going to have a whole bunch of what? A whole bunch of what? Uh, adders, multipliers, and so on and so forth. Clear? Now, we will get, hopefully, next time, I will show you some designs for the what? Of the multipliers and some designs of the what? Of the dividers so that you can see what you the, the the mixer we already talked about it mixers the gilbert mixers and so on and so forth we already talked about this the bandpass filter by the way this is another course which i encourage you to consider taking it if you are in rf this will be offered in the fall actually it's over this semester also everybody anybody taking 541 <laughs> this semester this semester did he talk about design of this guy yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> For some reason, it's offered both in the, in the fall and the spring. It's usually offered in one per year, but I don't know why. It's, I saw it in the fall as well. So if you have not taken it, I do recommend that you take it. If you are in R, clear? Okay, good. Now, let's get to the uh, face lock loop. Again, don't write anything. Just what? Just uh, follow me. Yeah. Okay, can you zoom back, please, a little bit? Okay, this is a face lock loop. This is face lock loop. Now, is it always, oops, sorry. I'm sorry. Divide my hand. Question. Will you always see this? You will not see this if the application is not frequency what? Synthesis. If you, for example, if the, if the, if the purpose of the phase lock loop is to recover the carrier phase, which means what? Carrier recovery. You are not going to see the division by N. The VCO will be in here, and the output of VCO will be what? Will be acquiring and the tracking the what? The reference input. Clear? Okay. Now, let's understand the components before we go into a little bit detail. So, this is at the beginning. Oh, we are going to assume that N equal to 1, and then we will what? Modify it. Clear? Okay. This is a phase lock loop. The first thing that we need to understand that it is a what? It's a nonlinear system, which means the analysis of the phase lock loop becomes extremely what? Complicated. Extremely complicated, but we are going to what? We are going to linearize the loop. 
in, in two lectures, we cannot go into the what? Into the nonlinear analysis. Clear? Okay, we will linearize it to see the analysis becomes a little bit easier. It's a negative feedback system. Consists of what? Two steps. The first step is called frequency acquisition, and the second step is called what? Phase tracking. So it's acquisition and what? Tracking. Which one comes first? The acquisition comes first after you acquire the frequency. Acquire the frequency means forget about this. Forget about it for a minute. Assume n is equal to 1. Yes? When the frequency of the VCO is equal to the frequency of the reference input, we say what? We say that the loop was able to acquire, <clears throat> excuse me, the loop has been able to acquire the input what? Frequency. But just because the two frequencies are equal does not necessarily mean their phases are what? Equal. If you look at this, look at this sine wave and look at this sine wave. Are their frequencies equal? The frequencies are equal, but is there a phase difference? There is a phase difference between them. Clear? So once you acquire the once you acquire the frequency, what are you trying to do? You are trying to track the phase of the incoming signal. The phase of the incoming signal. Now, in our application, the incoming signal is a pure, very high stable reference. But in general, in communications, the incoming signal is actually what? The modulated carrier. I'm not sure you are getting the point. Are you getting me so far or not? Here, we are only interested in the application of the phase lock loop as a what? As to provide for frequency synthesis. In general, the phase lock loop is used for something else, for some other stuff. In, in general, what is the input here? The input is the received modulated carrier. Received modulated carrier. And what are we trying to generate here? We are trying to generate a locally, a locally generated carrier that matches the carrier in frequency and approximate it closely to the what? To the face. Such that the face error becomes what? Becomes small. Clear? Luckily, we will not discuss this in our class, because in our class, we are only interested in the phase lock loop as a what? As a, uh, as a frequency synthesizer tool. Clear? So the input here is high. What, what do you see in here? You see an, what? a crystal oscillator. Are you following me or not? A crystal oscillator, like I was showing just a second. That's a reference input. Clear so far? Now, what are the uses? I already explained to you what other uses. We are only going to be interested in the first one. The uses is to generate a clean, a clean. Clean means what? Similar to what? Similar to the reference input. What does a clean mean? That phase noise, remember the phase noise? If the oscillator is clean, its spectral density has to be what? Just a single delta function at the frequency of interest. But we saw the phase noise. You try to clean it as much as possible. Tunable. Tunable means what? You can change it. That's a synthesizer. Tunable and stable. Local oscillator. Stable local oscillator. By the way, temperature to be what? Almost insensitive. Which means what? When the temperature changes, we want the frequency to be what? Very little. Very little changes. Clear? So a clean, tunable, and stable local oscillator reference. Frequency synthesizer. Where is this going to go? Can you tell me where is this going to go? This is going to go here. I'm going to sketch it above it. This is the what? LNA. Yes? And then what do I have? What is this? That's a mixer. This one is going this way. Yeah. Did you get my point or not? Okay. By the way, I'm ignoring for time being, ignoring the filter in between, which is the what? The image reject. Let's not worry about that. But did you answer where this one is going? This one is going into the LO port of the mixer. The LO port of the mixer. Both at the what? The transmitter and at what? The receiver. Clear? Okay, good. Now, what other things that we use it for? We use it for FM modulator, for FM demodulator, for what is FM modulator, by the way? In an FM modulator, you are going to <laughs> modulate an information signal onto the frequency of the carrier. Onto the frequency of the carrier. 
question. Is that the BCO? What is the BCO stands for? Voltage controlled oscillator, which means what? I have an oscillator whose frequency is controlled by who? By the voltage. But that's what FM is. Are you following me or not? That's what FM is. Clear? Okay. So frequency, uh, sorry, FM modulator, demodulator, and so on and so forth. Also used for what? Clock generators to recover what? To recover the clock? Sorry, to generate the clocks. By the way, in here, <coughs> the output of the BCO could be a what? A square wave, or it could be a what? A sine wave, or it could be any what? Any periodic function, like a sawtooth, for example, in a sweeping oscillator type. Clear? Okay. So, it, it clock generators, also the clock recovery for what? For both the code and for the what? code recovery and what? Clock recovery. Remember, whenever you use the word the clock recovery, it means what? To recover the symbols. Where is that, by the way? That's way down in the what? In the back end. The back end, which means what? In the baseband, done in digital, not part of the RF. Did you get my point or not? Okay, good. Now, what are the components of a phase lock loop? The components of the phase lock loop is the following. We have a phase detector. A phase detector is actually a what? A multiplier, a mixer. Are you following me or not? A multiplier, a mixer. In other words, can you use the Gilbert stuff here? You could use the Gilbert stuff here, the mixer that we talked about. The phase detector will compare the what? The, 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 the any reference input. Again, forget about the division by n. Don't look at this yet. Are you following me or not? Don't worry about this. We'll get to it in a minute. With the what? With the output of the BCO, it will generate an error signal. Clear? An error signal. The error signal will be proportional to the difference of what? The faces, which I'll show you that in just a second. Did you get my point or not? I want you to see something here. Listen. I want you to see something here before we continue. Let's assume it's square wave. Square wave. Let's assume this is the reference. This is the reference. And let's assume this is what? This is the what? Output of what? BCO. Answer me. The, uh, let's assume it's what? Square wave rather than sinusoid. Answer me the following question. Do they have the same frequency? They have the same frequency. At least, you know, this is not Picasso. But did you get my point? Okay. But is there a phase difference? Okay. What is the phase detector actually is? The phase detector is nothing more than an exclusive OR. An exclusive OR. What is exclusive OR tells you? It tells you, if they are what? If they are different, yes, the output is what? One. If they are the same, the output is what? Zero. So what do I get? This is the output of the what? Phase detector. What does it look like? Approximately, approximately. Are you following me or not? No response. Agree? Agree? Now, if the phase error is large, what can you tell me about these? These will be what? Wider. You agree? Wider means what? Means more energy. Are you following me or not? These are what? These are uh, uh, proportional to the what? To the phase error. Clear? Where is this? Where is this? This is here. Did you get my point? No response. Did you get my point? And the phase detector is basically a what? <coughs> Clear? Answer me the following question. <coughs> Why am I a low-pass filter? This is called what? The loop filter. The loop filter. LF stands for what? Loop filter. Answer me the following question. What, first of all, before you answer me that question, what is the next device? The next device is called what? A VCO. A VCO. Let's see if you remember. Do you remember the VCO? This is the VCO where we use a what? A barrack. By the way, what is this? Just this one. 
That's the cultist oscillator. Yes or no? The one that we derived. Yes? Okay, we put the barrector across the what? Across these two points, and we apply it what? Reverse bias or forward bias? Rever uh, for a reverse bias. By the way, some one student told me that the last time I sketched this, I, I put the wrong uh, uh, polarity. Checks it. If this is the negative, this is the negative, I need to put the what? The positive on the negative. Did you get this or not? So if I made a mistake, check it. I did not have a chance to check it. The, if you do have it, let me know. Do you have it? Did you get it or not? Can you bring it? Bring this one. Everybody is wearing shorts today. I don't know if they... Okay. See this one? This is... It, it, can, you, can you zoom in, please? No, don't go away. You need to pick it up. Uh, can you zoom in, please, a little bit? Operator. Dear operator. Uh, okay, can you see it? It says negative voltage. It should be what? Positive voltage. Correct it. Why? It, this needs to be what? Reverse bias, not forward bias. And for, if you put negative here, it means what? This is a forward bias. Clear? So change this one here. I forgot who, which student corrected me, but anyway, correct it. Clear? This is this guy. Yes? Where, where is this one? This one. This one is this voltage. Did you get this or not? That will control the what? The biasing of the what? Of the vector so that it behaves as a what? As a capacitor. From it, you are going to be able to what? To change the frequency, alter the capacitor. Clear? Question now for you. Back to our original question. What is the question? Why am I filtering this? By the way, what do you get by low pass filtering this one? Low pass filtering this one. The question, first of all, is this a periodic signal? Yes, yes. This is a periodic signal. If this is periodic and this is periodic, the phase error will be what? Will be similar to this one. Yes? Does it have a DC? Does it have a DC component? I want to recover it. I want to, what, to find the what? The average value, some average value here. Why? Why I, I want the average value here? If this is a periodic signal and this is a VCO, a VCO is an FM modulator. Do you agree with this statement or not? What is FM modulation means? Means you are going to insert the what? The modulating signal, modulating, ING, modulating signal onto the what? The frequency of a carrier. Agree? If this is a periodic signal, let's see if you still remember. In FM modulation, by the way, FM modulation will be included in the final exam. In FM modulation, what did we create here when there is a modulating signal here? A modulating signal. What did we create here? We created all types of what? Side lobes. Yes or no? How many? Only two side lobes or infinite number of side lobes? Infinite number of side lobes. Now, remember that equation which has the Bessel function in it? All types of what? All types of what? Side lobes in here, which means what? All of these will be spurs. We are only interested in one frequency in here. Did you get my point or not? You need to filter this one here to get a what? To get a relatively what? Constant value. A relatively constant value or a very slowly changing voltage in here that will control the what? The frequency of this guy. Yes? Controlling the frequency, you are controlling the phase as well. Why? Is the frequency and the phase related? How? Still waiting. What is the relationship between the frequency and the phase? Say that again. The, fa the frequency is what? Is the derivative of the what? Of the phase. Or the phase is the integral of the what? Of the frequency. Are you following that? So when we say this is a voltage-controlled oscillator, when you are controlling the frequency, you are also controlling the what? You are also controlling the phase. Now, what are you trying to control? The, you are going to what? You are trying to change the phase of this guy such that it becomes what? Closer to this guy. Did you understand it? Or closer to this guy. By the way, if it is closer, if it is identical, what am I getting at the output of the exclusive law? I get a zero. Are you following or not? I get a zero. What do I end up? 
I end up with a voltage here is equal to what? Zero. So that's the VCO is zero. It's, it's a frequency of whatever the frequency of the VCO is the same as the reference input. Clear? Clear? Now, as a synthesizer, what do I want? The synthesizer now, which one is being locked? It is this frequency that is being locked, not this one. Are you following or not? Because it is comparing this one with this one. So when the loop gets locked, what do we have? This frequency is equal to this frequency, which means what is the frequency of this guy? The frequency of this guy is n time, because we are dividing by n. This one I say divided by n, this is a frequency divider, not a what? An amplitude divider. Did you get my point or not? This is a frequency divider, not an amplitude divider. And let me write it here. Divider. Frequency. Frequency dividers. These frequency dividers could be what? Fixed or it could be what? Programmable. Are you following programmable? You control it via what? Via software. V uh, fixed or programmable, it could be an integer or it could be a what? A fraction. I'd say this one is weird. What does a fraction mean? We'll get to that in a minute. Clear so far? Yes or no? Okay, so these are the components. The, this, co by the way, this continue until what? Until the frequency in here is what? Is the same as, sorry, the frequency here is the same as the frequency here and the phase in here is what? is very close to the phase in here, which means what? The phase error is what? Is negligible. Clear? Now, since the frequency is related to the phase, I will do the analysis based on the what? The phase, not based on the frequency. Did you get it or not? Oh, why? Because that is what is called. It's called phase lock loop. Everyone, we are calling it phase lock loop. So you are dealing with what? You are dealing with the phase. Let's see. So since, again, the phase and the frequency are related, we usually analyze the PLL in terms of the phase rather than the frequency. Now, let's see if you can help me here. First of all, the phase detector. When in lock, by the way, again, as I told you, let me write it down here. We have two steps. The first one. It's called frequency acquisition. And the second one is called what? Phase track. Phase track. Frequency acquisition to what? To make the frequency of the what? Of the input, the reference input, equal to the frequency at the output of the VCO and the phase tracking to make their phase difference or the phase error approximately equal to what? Equal to zero. Clear? Okay. Now, again, as I told you, some uh, important PLL spec, the capture. Range, the capture range, it means the following. Starting from an unlocked phase lock loop state, what is, sorry, the, the capture range is the range of input frequencies, the loop can what? Lock into. Clear? Will you start from what? Unlocked. In other words, the phase lock loop is what? Running free. Are you following or not? What range of the input frequencies, what range of the fre input frequencies will the, will the phase lock loop be able to what? To acquire. Will be able to acquire, to lock into. That is called the what? The capture range. Another one is called the what? The lock range. Uh, 
once locked, once locked, so the phase lock loop is what? Is locked. The range of input frequencies Oh, by the way, all of these types of questions in the final and the true and false section. And the true and false section. I need to make sure that you do understand the definitions of this. Once locked, the range of the input frequencies that the PL, or oh, sorry, over which the PLL can maintain its lock state is the lock range. Which one do you think is higher, the lock range or the capture range? The lock range is higher than the capture range. The lock range is higher than the capture range. The, again, what does range mean? One more time. Let's assume that you locked into what? Into F sub zero. Just an example, F sub zero. And the input, so you are locked into F sub zero. The input change frequencies. This one should be able to what? Should be able to lock onto the what? Onto the new frequency. Did you understand that or not? What range of the input frequencies that it can change? The input frequencies can change such that the loop will still be able to what? To lock into it. Did you get this or not? To lock into it. Capture range is what? You are starting from what? From the cold. Are you following that? You are starting from the cold. Cold means what? You are, you are unlocked. What is the range of input frequencies that the loop can what? Can lock into? And then the third one. The third one is the Settling time. Settling time. How long does it take to what? How long does it take to settle, i.e., lock into a given? When the input, by the way, if the input is changing frequency, how long does it take you to lock and to log, to not log, to lock into that in your frequency? Are you following me? Think about it as what? As the switching times or the tunable times. Do you understand? Think about it that way. How long does it take you to switch from one frequency to another frequency? Now, we will talk about these uh, three parameters and some more uh, shortly. Let's first of all understand the operations of this. Clear? Yes. So I couldn't understand why the lock range is higher than the capture. Uh, higher, by the way, the higher it means what? The better or the worse? The better. The better. And then that's what? Because what? Because you have already what? You have already achieved what? Locking. You have, uh, remember, the other one, you are starting from what? The cold state. Cold state means what? You are unlocked. Once you get locked, it means what? You have already a, a conditioned your parameter of your loop to be able to track a what? A wider range of input, uh, sorry, to acquire a larger range of input frequencies with a what? With a still a small error. Because you have adjusted what? The dynamic of the loop. The, for example, the loop bandwidth. Did you get my point or not? The noise will be what? Once you locked into it, it means what? It means that you have specified what? What type of the the low pass filter, which I'll show in just a second, that will allow you to what? That would allow you to get rid of as much noise as possible. Clear? Increasing the range of the input frequency. Not much, but increases. So is it more difficult to maintain the locking than lock to a new frequency? Where did I say maintain the locking? Locking to a new frequency. When I say maintain here, maintain the lock state, I'm not talking about what? Maintain the lock state to a what? to the same frequency. And to another frequency, but it still be able to what? To lock into. Do you follow me or not? Yes or no? 
the input frequency could change in a what? In a step, in a step uh, format or in a what? In a ramp thing and so on and so forth. The loop needs to be able to what? Needs to be able to lock into each one of them. Clear? Okay. Again, we'll get to this in, in just a second. Let's understand first of all the analysis. Let's get back to here. Okay. So the phase detector, when in lock, the output of the phase detector is a voltage that is proportional to the phase error. Let's define the phase error as what? VE equal to VR minus what? V naught. Clear? Everything is in terms of the phase. I, I'm not worrying about the frequency right now. In other words, I'm assuming that we already acquired the what? Acquired the frequency. We are only tracking the phase. Now, explain this one to me, by the way. This is, again, as I told you, the phase detector is acting as a what? As a multiplier. Clear? A multiplier. Why is this one sine? And first of all, do you see the frequency? Are they the same? They are the same. But the phase, this one is the reference phase. This one is the what? Is the locally oscillator from the VCO. Again, ignore this for a minute. Ignore this for a minute. Clear? Why is one of them is cosine, the other one is a sine? Which means what? There is a 90 degree phase shift between them. Can you tell me one? Did you answer my question? I'm not sure you understood my question. Why is this one sine and this one is what? Is cosine. What if they were both cosine? Let's see if, if they were both cos. If you do have cosine A, cosine B, what would you get? You would get cosine the difference, cosine the sum. Cosine the difference is what we are looking for. Cosine the sum will be filtered out. You agree? Yes or no? Okay. Where if we do have sine and cosine, we will have what? Sign the difference, sign the sum. The sum is gone. I will get sign the difference rather than cosine the difference. So the difference is what? Either sign the difference or what? Cosine the difference. Why do I want to sign the difference, not the cosine? So that I know whether the error is what? On the positive side or on the what? Negative side. Did you get my point? The cosine is an even function. So if when you say cosine phi e, whether phi e is positive or what? Negative. The cosine is a what? It's positive. So you don't know whether what? Which one is, which one is larger, the face? Is it v, uh, phi r or is it what? Phi naught. But if it is sine, you will be able to tell which one is what? Which one is which? Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? Okay, so the sine and the cosine here. Okay, so what do I end up with? V epsilon of T, which is the epsilon voltage, uh, sorry, the voltage error, is what? KPD, what is KPD? KPD is the phase detector gain factor. This phase detector gain factor. Units is what? Volts per what? Radians. Why is it volts per radians? Because uh, this one is in what? In radians. Uh, you are multiplying it by what? Volts. This is a voltage. So AR a0 over 2, where is the over 2 came from? This so is when you multiply sine cosine, you will get one half. Okay, sine theta e of t. Question, linear or nonlinear? This one. Is it linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear function of theta e. Why? Because there is a sign. However, if you are going to assume that the phase error is relatively small, what is sine theta approximately equal to? Theta itself, which means what? If theta e is a small, then sine theta e of t is what? Theta e of t, and we end up with the voltage here proportional to the what? To the phase error. Clear? Yes or no? Okay. So we filter it. This is, by the way, we, we, did, did you understand why we filter? Let's look at the filter first before we get to the BCO. This is a loop filter. The loop filter is needed to smooth the output of the phase detector. It, we need it to smooth the output of the phase detector. The phase detector, the one that I just showed you. Where is it? Does, for example, in this case here, does it have sharp edges? It has sharp edges. In general, what does it look like? Like a sine theta. You follow me or not? And the theta, if you approximate theta, theta is also changing what? In some kind of what? Step stuff. Just to smooth it. You use a what? You use a a low-pass filter to smooth the output of the phase detector 
suppress also the harmonics, the one that I was just telling you about, harmonics or spurious components from the output. Clear? Remember, when you are applying an input voltage to a VCO, that is regarded as what? FM modulation. Do we agree or not? No response. Do we agree or not? What is FM? One more time. What is FM? FM is the what? Is the process by changing the frequency of the carrier signal in accordance with what? With an information signal. In this case, the information happens to be what? Happens to be the voltage. I have no idea where I put it. Happens to be the voltage at what? The voltage at the output of the what? Of the low filter. Clear? So you need to smooth it. Okay. The low filter, by the way, could be passive or it could be what? Active. They're just an example of a passive filter, a lead, lag filter, resistor here. What is the transfer function? The transfer function of this is simply F of S equal to what? R2 plus 1 over S. It's simple math. Did you get this or not? And you end up with uh, what order of the filter is? It's first order. By the way, if the loop filter is of first order, what is the order of the phase lock loop? If the filter, no, this is a premature question. Hold on that question, premature. I need to show you one more thing. You will not be able to answer me that question right now. Premature, hold it. I will get back to it in a minute. Did you get this or not? Yes or no? Okay, notice by the way, if the filter is a passive filter, you are not going to be able to get any what? any gain about it. But it does not have to be a passive filter. It could be a what? An active filter. The active filter, you all know this is a what? Oops. This is an operation amplifier. What is the uh, transfer function? You understand how to get the FS? FS is the transfer function, which is what? The output in the S domain divided by the input in the S domain. Clear? Okay. So FS here is what? Is this, is this impedance divided by this? And you simplify it, you get this. Clear? Okay. By the way, what do you notice in here? What do you notice in here is that once you see S in the denominator, once you see S in the denominator, what does it mean? There is an element of what? Integration in that filter. That filter, you see the S? That is an element. X of S, Y of S. That's an integrator, pure integrator. What is the relationship? Yes or no? An integrator is a what? Uh, it's, it's a low pass filter is a what? It's an integrator. Are you following or not? It's one over S. Here, we do have what? We have a pure integrator. In here, we don't have a pure integrator. Did you get this or not? Okay, good. Now, but what is the meaning of the word lead lag? It means the phases start with what? Start some, in other words, it's like, it looks like this. You follow me or not? Lagging and then what? Slay. Clear? Okay, good. So, it could be what? It, don't get uh, confused with this negative sign. This one is just because... The operation amplifier is, uh, is providing a what? Uh, a 180 degree phase shift. This negative sign will be lumped with what? With other negative uh, uh, phase difference in the circuit. Clear? Clear? Okay, good. Now, let's get back to the, to the BCO. This is the BCO. So the output, the output of the where I put the, the face lock loop. Where did I put the face lock? Hey, no. Yeah, here. The output of the low pass filter is going to go to the what? To the BCO. Now, what is the BCO? Let's see if you understand the characteristic. This is a control voltage. This is what? F sub zero. Yes? F sub zero is the output of the what? Of the BCO. Now, what is misleading here? Sketching it as a what? Straight line. In reality, it's like this. Yes, the slope is a what? 
is a trade line. Now, when the voltage control is equal to zero, what do I have? I have what is known as what? The free running frequency. What is the free running means? Means the, the original what? The original tuning frequency, the original tuning frequency of your oscillator. Without what? Without any, in other words, the varactor is gone. There is no varactor. Think about it this way. Did you get this or not? Which is what? So the F sub zero resulted from what? The equation that we derived in the extra credit for the, for the Hartley or for the Coptis oscillator. Clear? Now, as the input voltage increases, the uh, frequency will also what? Increase. The frequency will, uh, can be what? Decrease. Remember, remember whether the voltage is what? Positive or whether the voltage is what? Negative. Clear? So you either increase the frequency in one direction or what? Decrease it on the other direction. Yes? Yes? Okay. What is this line? That's the slope. If the what? If the voltage here is changing slowly, changing slowly, so we are talking about what? Roughly here. We can approximate the operation by what? A linear operation. You agree? If you look at this here, from here to here, does it look linear? It looks linear. Now, this is a frequency, but since the phase is proportional to the integral, if the frequency is proportional to the what? To the voltage. If the frequency is proportional to the voltage, yes? What does that tell you about the phase? If the frequency at the output of the VCO is proportional to the input voltage, what does that tell you about the phase? The phase is proportional to what? To the integral of the input. Yes? Do we see that integral? We see that integral. Did you understand what I just or not? Which means what? What is the VCO is acting as? It's acting as an integral, and its transfer function is what? KVCO. KVCO, again, is the... It's constant associated with what? With the VCO, clear gain of the VCO, divided by what? Divided by S. Clear? Did you understand why did I divide it by S? Yes? What does that mean? It means the output phase, the output phase in here is proportional to the what? To the integral of the input what? Input voltage. Clear, which means what in the S domain is what is KBCO okay, over what over S. The time is Clear. eight o'clock. Now you, I'm ready to go back to my original question, which was what the filter. What order is this? First order. What will be the order of the loop? The order of the loop means what? The order of the closed loop transfer function. The closed loop transfer function. The closed loop, by the way, transfer function is the one that will determine the what? The stability of the systems, all the transient responses, and so on and so forth. The settling time, the overshoot, and so on and so forth. Clear damping factors, whatever. Yes? What will be the degree of the, of the loop itself? The, the closed loop. It will be of a second order. Why? These are connected in what? In cascade. So what I have is the following. I have 1, 1 plus tau 2s, 1 plus tau 1s times what? 1 over s. Where did this come from? The 1 over s. Where the, it's from the VCO divided by what? 1. Did I mention it's negative feedback? I did not mention that it's negative feedback. Uh, 1 plus 1 plus tau 2, uh, uh, sorry, tau 2 s, divide by 1 plus tau 1 s, times what? 1 over s. Agree? This will cancel with this guy. Do you agree? But what will this term be? It will has s squared. Did you get my point or not? It has s squared and it's coming from this term. S times s, uh, it will be what? S squared. Which means the loop will be of which order? Second order. Clear? Clear? The more, by the way, you put integrators in here, the more integrators in here, can you tell me what happens? In other words, the more you put zeros, uh, not zeros, poles at S equal to zero, at S equal to zero, what will happen? Control. Did you take any control classes?
Let me ask a question. How do you get the steady state error? The steady state error in a control system. We have a control system. This is a control system. This is the plant that I'm trying to control. This is the sensor, some kind of a sensor. And this is the reference set. This is the error set. How do you get the steady state error? The steady state error. Steady state error means, well, let's assume this is, this is not part of our course. But you must have had it before. Let's assume this is epsilon of t. Yes? What is the steady state error? Limit as t approaches what? Infinity. Yes or no? Which is what? Limit. You follow me or not? Yes? Okay, can you tell me what is E of S? H of S, what is, sorry, T of S. I, uh, by the way, I, you notice I'm not writing this here. Uh, this is control classes. This is E, E, I don't know what E, E is. What E, E, I have no idea. Okay, what is the, help me. What is T of S? T of S is a closed loop. Agree? Okay. What is the E of S? I cannot hear you. And that's correct. One O, one plus G of S, H of S. Yes? Now listen to me. The steady state error is limit S E of S, which means what? I'm going to multiply this by S. And then I take the limit as S approaches what? Zero. Did you get this or not? If this term here has poles at S equal to what? Zero. More than one, one of them will cancel this one. And the others, when you plug it in, S equal to zero, you will get infinity, which means what? It means this will approach what? If this one approaches infinity, what will this one approach, the whole thing? Which means the steady state equal to what? Zero. Do you understand that or not? Okay, forget. Forget. I got into territory that you might not have seen before. But I thought this is control stuff. Uh, control is part of the phase of loop. So, uh, so there is no other way around it. Clear so far? Okay, forget it. Forget I mentioned it. Okay, so, a, a clear so far. Okay, now, let's get to the, let's get into the linear analysis. Let's see if you can help me. Everything is now what? Linear. What am I going to represent this? By a what? An integrator. This is, of course, the filter. This is a what? V epsilon of S, which is proportional to the what? To the phase error. So, what do I have? V E of S is what? KPD times what? V error of S, which is what? KPD times this. V1 of S is what? Everything is in the S domain. V1 of S is what? Is this times F of S, which is the transfer function. And the, in the S domain, you multiply. If you do have two systems cascaded, you multiply the what? The transfer functions. Yes? Yes? Okay. So you get this. KPD, VE of S, VS. And what is the VOS? VOS is this multiplied by what? V1 of S. If you write it down, and then what? The, by the way, the open loop gain is what? Is G of S. Why the open loop gain is G of S? G of S is a combination of this. Why is it G of S? Because it's a what? Unity feedback. Did you get this or not? It's unity feedback, so which means what? H of S is equal to what? Is equal to 1. And you end up with this. H of S. And this H of S, by the way, is what we just called what? T of S. I'm so inconsistent. This T of S, where? This T of S, I'm right now calling it what? H of S. Okay, one second. Change this. This T of S is the what? Transfer function. And what do you notice, by the way? 
It is a function, the closed loop transfer function. It's a function of what? F of S. By the way, if you notice this, you will say that this loop is of first order, but you would be wrong. Why? Because you need to look at the F of S if they do have what? If they do have pulse, it will be multiplied by this S. Did you get this or not? This is just a general what? A general, if F of S is a first order loop, then the phase lock loop will be what? Second order. Once you get, by the way, once you get the closed loop transfer function, what can you do? You can sketch, for example, the root locus. Yes? From the root locus, what can you find? You can find a what? What is the, uh, the stability of the system? You can also evaluate all the, uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the for example, the, the uh, uh, gain margin, the phase margin. What does gain margin, phase margin means? It means how much you what? How much you can add gain into the loop or how much you can add phase into the loop to res and still result in a what? In a stable system. Clear? You can do everything you, you want to do with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the given FS. I will not ask you on this in the final exam. I will not. I reform, the one that I will ask you in the exam, I will tell you. When we get there, I will tell you. This is it. Clear? This is not. But the, why it's not? It's too much math. I reform, I too much math. In the final exam, uh, you are going to be already, your brain is on, uh, on steroid. I don't know where your brain will be. <laughs> but anyway. Clear? Clear? Okay, good. Now, let's get into the frequency synthesis stuff. What do we have here? In a frequency synthesis, I'm going to divide by what? N. I put the N here. So what is it? This one, I'm going to assume that it's locked. So this frequency, F sub zero, is equal to what? N times what? FR. Now, at the beginning, assume N is an integer. Assume N is an integer. We'll get to the fractional fractional, uh, the fractional uh, dividers in just a second. So this is an integer. What did I generate? Tell me what did I generate? I generated a whole bunch of what? Frequencies based on this value. If this value is a constant, which means what? It's a static divider, then I'm going to get how many frequencies? One frequency. But if this one is what? Programmable, then what am I getting? I'm getting a, a range of frequencies. Clear? Okay. Question. Question. What is the resolution? Don't read. Don't read. Mm, you are reading. What is the resolution of this? What do I mean by the resolution? I mean the increments between one frequency and the what? The next frequency. What will be the increment in here? The resolution is what? Is F sub what? R. Yes or no? Do I want FR? FR is the frequency of the output of the what? Of the highly a stable a crystal oscillate. Clear? Okay. Do I want it to be high or low? Do I want the resolution to be high or low? I want it to be low. There are some systems in which what? We need to generate a whole bunch of what? Whole bunch of frequencies. Did you get my point or not? Okay. Oh, now, you keep in mind that there's a rule of thumb. Fine resolution. FR needs to be very low. The lower it gets, the switching time, or the tuning time, or the settling time, the one that we just talked about, <coughs> will go what? Will go up, which means what? It will take you longer to what? It will take you longer to settle on a what? On a frequency and the track its face. That's the trade that you want. We want F sub R to be what? Small. We want F sub R to be small. Why? Because we want the resolution to be really what? Fine. But the smaller this one is, the what? The, the switching time is, uh, is higher. Now, there is a rule of thumb that they use. It's a quick rule of thumb. It tells you what? It tells you that the, <coughs> that the switching time multiplied by the resolution should be around 20 to 25. Around 20 to 25. Which means what? If you want one hertz resolution, if you want one hertz resolution, then the, the, the switching time should be what? Should be 25 seconds. Is this high or low? 25 seconds. Is that high or low? It's very high. Are you following or not? It's very high. So what does that mean? It means that I need to what? I need to reduce. If, if you increase the resolution, if you increase the resolution, then the settling time or the switching time will become what? Will become smaller. Now, you could also add you could also add a what? You could also add at the output a divider. 
So this is the VCO, this is to the loop. What is now the output frequency? The output frequency is from the divider. It's what? It's N F R over what? M. What is the resolution in this case? Resolution here, here. What is the resolution? The resolution is what? It's F R over what? Over N. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? Did it go down? It went down. So the resolution went down without affecting the what? The loop. Without affecting the loop, because we, the, the, the divider was added what? Outside of the loop. Did you get my point or not? Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> by the way, if this one here, if this one here, remember we want it to be what? Small, because we want what? Fine resolution. Could we add adder, sorry, could we add divider here? So, for example, if we started, well, let's say, 10 megahertz, can we put a divider in here by what? By 100? So the 10 megahertz, help me, becomes what? 100 kilohertz. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? Okay, so it becomes what? It becomes the resolution, becomes what? Becomes smaller and smaller. Clear? No response. Clear? Okay. You could also add a mixer in the loop. This type of question you might see in the final. Do you follow me or not? Not a design, but an analysis, which is which simpler or harder. Which one is simpler, design or analysis? Analysis is simpler, of course. Okay, I might give you something like this. Let's see if you can help me here. What is this? I added a mixer within the loop. Within the loop. Notice, by the way, this frequency might not be what? Stable, very stable. This one is coming from a what? From another what? From another oscillator. Yes? But once it is part of the what? The loop the output of the VCO will follow the what? Will follow the reference because the locking will be where? Will be here, not in here. Did you get my point or not? Okay, now, let's see if you can help me. Can you tell me where the equation came from? This equation, F sub Z, remember, by the way, after every mixer, what do you need? You need a bandpass filter. Why? Because the mixer is generating what? The sum and the what? The differences. Clear? No response. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, so, in the exam, by the way, I might omit this. So you understand that there is a what? There is a bandpass filter in there. Did you get my point or not? The, the thing that what I'm trying to tell you is that we are going to assume that this filter is what? Ideal. Are you following me or not? So we are going to get either a what? But sometimes, by the way, you will see it written like this. I want you to see if you, this is the mixer. You will see it written like this. What does this mean? What does this mean? The, where is the output, by the way, of the mixer? This is the output of the mixer. It means what? Once you put a negative sign here, means what? You are retaining the difference of the frequencies. If you put a plus, it means what? You are retaining the what? The sum. And you are rejecting the what? The, the difference. And instead of putting a filter, they denote it by just plus or minus. Clear? I might use this one in the final exam for one reason and one reason only. It takes less time to sketch this. I don't want to sketch this. <laughs> Did you get this or not? Sketching is so bothering to me. You can see most of the charts. I what? Scan it from our textbook. So I don't want to generate the. It's never ending. Okay. Now, explain it to me. Where did this come from? I'm still waiting. Where did this uh, the frequency comes here? By the way, is the resolution is still F sub R? Still F sub R. But what is the F sub M used? F sub M is to use what? To shift towards the desired what? The desired range. Did you get my point or not? So, for example, if this is, let's say this is one, 100 kilohertz, but 100 kilohertz, but I want to generate something in the what? In the megahertz or even in the higher range, gigahertz. I can adjust it using what? F sub M. This is just a shift. Clear? Where did this come from? This is F sub zero. What is this? F sub M. Yes or no? Actually, it's what? Plus or minus F sub M? Yes? What is this? F sub zero minus F sub M divided by what? N. 
Did you get this or not? So what do I have? F sub R is equal to what? F sub zero plus or minus over what? N, which means what is F sub zero? It's F sub N, again, plus or minus whatever, N times F sub R. Clear? Clear? Okay. So you can use what? You can use a mixer, as I will show you in just an example. Let's take a simple example so that you can uh, uh, you can help me. A uh, simple example. We have a cellular system requiring a local oscillator operating in the 800 megahertz band. 800 megahertz band is to receive several channels having 30 kilohertz spacing. What is this? By the way, do you recognize this? Uh huh? That's the analog port. That's your analog, very good. That's the analog port. Used to be called amps. I think this is what you said. Uh, yeah, but I did not hear you, it's even though you are close to me, but I, I am old, hard of hearing. A amp stands for what? Advanced? By the way, the, they call it advanced because at that time it was what? <laughs> advanced. At that time it was advanced. Advanced? Mobile? own system. This is the, the G1, the first generation. Clear? The first generation. The channels were how much spaced? 30 kilohertz. By the way, it was used only, only for voice. There was no what? Data, there was no social stuff, there was nothing. I reform it, just voice, which is what it's supposed to do, just voice. Okay. 30 kilohertz. Is that, by the way, enough for voice? That's enough for voice. The modulation, anybody? 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 No, it's, it's AM. Actually, AM. The control was what? FSK. The control, control signaling. You understand what control signal means? The dialing or something like this is all what? Control signal used FSK. But the, but the modulation was just regular what? AM. Clear? Okay, anyway, th that's not the issue here. The reference is what? 7.5 kilohertz. Just an example, 7.5 kilohertz. The BCO, I want the BCO to generate what? Uh, from this loop to generate anywhere between what? 20, 217 to 222, which means what? I need to multiply this by what? Four to get into the 800 megahertz range. Clear? Yes or no? 800 megahertz range. <clears throat> Clear so far or not? Okay. Now, notice, by the way, when you generate this in the 800 megahertz range, you need to be able to what? To cover both the uplink and the what? Downlink. Remember, you need two frequencies. One to what? Support the uplink from the mobile unit to the what? To the base station. And one to support the what? Downlink from the base station to the mobile station. Okay, I use this one, 228 megahertz, and then this one is a divider, 73, 735 to 1400. You write the equation for a simple equation. Where is this? Where did this come from? This is F1 minus F0. I'm retaining the what? The differences divided by N. The answer to this is locking into what? 7.5. As you change the N, do you understand the notation? When it says 735 to what? 1400, what does it mean? It means 735, 736, 737, a unit of one. These are integers. Clear? You will see that you will end up this anywhere between 217 to what? 222. You multiply it by what? Four to generate what? The desired range. Clear? This is a type of question I might give you on the final exam. Clear? I just want you to what? Analyze it. Is that hard or easy? It's so easy. In other words, the, in the final exam, the first question I recommend you attack is this type of question. It just be careful of what, how to, uh, uh, how to track the uh, loop. By the way, how many loops in here? One loop. In the exam, I will give you what, multiple loops. Interact together. Output of one loop into another loop and into the third loop. But you need to be able to what? To track it. Clear? Best way not to make any mistake is what? When you go across the loop, you write what is it at each point. And just like this, 
you write what is this, you write what is this, you write what is this, you write what is this, so that you don't make mistakes. Clear? Clear? Okay. Now, uh, uh, let me show you, first of all, the, uh, the, this another example, by the way, another example. A frequency synthesizer provide for what? 401 frequencies equally spaced by what? 10 kilohertz. So you are trying to generate what? Fre uh, frequency synthesizer providing 401 frequencies equally spaced at what? 10 kilohertz. This is the resolution. The range of the synthesizer. What does this mean? When I say the range of the synthesizer frequency, what does it mean? These are the output of the what? Of the VCO. I want the output of the VCO to be what? Anywhere between 144 to what? 148. Did you get this or not? 144 to 148 in increments of what? 10 kilohertz. Yes, in increments of 10 kilohertz. The reference is given 10 kilohertz. The local oscillator, this local oscillator, is 100 megahertz. And the question tells you what? Find the range of N. What is the range of N to generate this? Clear? A simple math, you end up with what? N equal to what? 4400 to 4800. Clear? Clear? Now, when I get home tonight, I will be assigning the last extra credit, which is also worth what? Four points. One a problem, but it's a heavy problem. I will ask you to design a synthesizer, not in a circuit way, in a block diagram, that will generate range of frequencies, but with different what? Increments. And they are all locked to the same reference. I need you to understand it before I email it to you. The reference is the same for all what? For all ranges. Did you get this or not? You are going to use what? Multiple loops such that, in other words, multiple VCOs such that the output of each VCO is in what? In the same range but different what? Resolution. Did you get this or not? A resolution from what? 1, 10, 100, and so on and so forth. Now, if you cannot come up with it, at least come up with what? With one of them to get one point. Better than what? Zero. However, I do not recommend that you spend too much time because it will be a little bit frustrating. Do you understand or not? Trying to figure out where to put the what? Where to put these mixers and so on and so forth. And everything has to be what? Within a loop. In other words, I don't want to see something which is what? Outside a loop. Everything has to be within a loop. In other words, it's like this. Rather than what? Rather than to put a what? To put an, uh, a divider here and so on and so forth. If, if you put a divider in here, that divider is not, be, is not going to be within a loop. Did you get my point or not? Yes or no? Cannot hear you. Okay, good. Now, I want to show you one more thing. Professor, you have three minutes. I thank you. Before we get this one, we will do it uh, next time, the digital, uh, the direct digital synthesizer. I want to show you one thing here, which is the fractional end synthesizer. You can tell, by the way, that this one is not organized as this one. When I was planning to start on this one, students start asking from another course. And I what? Answer this, write this. Answer this, write this. And it became what? Messed up. But I want you to understand it a little bit. Next time, I will clean it up. What is a fractional end synthesizer? Suppose, for example, I want to divide by, let's say, four and a quarter, rather than what? Four. Did you get my point or not? What do we do here? We are going to use a divider that can divide by what? Two values. N or what? N plus one. Let's assume the N is what? Four. And let's assume the N plus one is what? What do you mean, let's assume? If n is 4, n plus 1 is 5. Did you get my point or not? What is the idea here? The idea here is the following. Is that for a given number of cycles, how much more than 4 here I want? I want the division to be what? By 4.25, which means what? I need to add a division ratio of what? A quarter. For every what? For every three cycles in here, I will divide three cycles of this guy. I will divide by what? Three cycles of this guy. I will divide by what? Four. Yes? And in the fourth cycle, I will divide by what? 
five. You lost me here. So what do I have? Listen to me. If you want to get the average, what is it? It's four, four, plus what? Four, plus what? Four, plus what? Five. For every three cycles, division by four, I will what? I will what? Control this one to what? To divide by five. What is the average? Is, uh, help me. 17 over what? Four, which is what? 4.25. Did you get it or not? I, I, I ran out of time. Next time I will clean up. But did you get the idea? Did you get the idea? In a fractional, in a fractional n, I will use what? Two dividers. One by n, one by n plus one. And I will what? Use an accumulator. By the way, what is this accumulator? What are you accumulating? Clock cycles. Did you get this or not? For every three cycles, in this example, for every three cycles, I want this one to divide by what? And you notice, by the way, the output of this guy is what? Is back into the accumulator. So that the accumulator accumulates. How many times did you divide by what? N. The next time you will divide by what? N plus one. Then you go back to dividing by what? N until what? Until the three cycles, you divide by what? N plus one. And so on and so forth. Clear? And this is done for final resolution. <clears throat> Fortunately, I don't have to talk. But I will clean it up next time. And then the last thing I will show you next time is what is known as a what? Direct digital synthesizer, where we are going to what? We are going to generate, and instead of what? A voltage-controlled oscillator, it will be what? NCO. NCO stands for what? Numerically controlled oscillator. But I think I ran out of time. Did I run out of time? Yes, Professor, we're out of time. Okay, okay. We'll continue this uh, next time. Everybody got their assignment? Pick it up. Pick it up, please. This concludes today's session of EE 544 on Tuesday, April 29th, 2014.